In a world full of complicated narratives and 40-hour epics, take a step back to a simpler time when the entire story of a game could be summarized in one simple phrase. What the hell is up with this egg whale? The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Revisit one of the most beloved Zelda games that used to be the hardest to go back to. Because even at the time, no one thought this looked good. As Nintendo slaps a 21st century spit shine on it. Complete with excellent new music, sound effects, and fresh visuals that make it look like a bunch of Funko Pops shot with a tilt shift lens. Plus a map that stretches all the single screen rooms of the overworld into a cohesive whole. In an entry that recaptures the nostalgia of the Game Boy era without making you carry around AA batteries and a lamp. The downside? Now the game runs like absolute ass sometimes. I love the smell of progress in the morning. Don the signature green tunic of Zelda once again. Uh, sorry, I mean Mr. Zelda where you'll wake up stranded on the shores of the mysterious Koholint Island, a land of magic, monsters, and Nintendo-licensed characters. As you guide the intrepid hero to wake the sleeping windfish, while being constantly reminded that this is all a dream and if you succeed, the whole island will disappear. In a surprisingly crushing twist for an early Nintendo title that would even make Yoko Taro smile from behind his horrible moon mask. Now try playing this thing when you're eight. Oh, you thought the animal village was cute, huh, little Timmy? Well, now it's time to take them all behind the shed. Slice bushes one more time as your favorite timeless elfin avatar. And enjoy a Zelda straight out of the Link to the Past mold as you explore the island section by section until you are gated by needing the very specific tool you get at the dungeon you have to go to and have to do an obscure trading quest or enter one of the federally mandated eight dungeons to progress. Then do some light puzzle solving involving the one item you get in the dungeon. Figure out the one trick to the boss and repeat it till it's dead. In a gameplay loop so familiar, it feels like being tucked into bed and kissed on the forehead. Zelda making you feel accomplished for doing kindergarten block puzzles since 1986. Explore all that Koholint Island has to offer and wring every last drop out of what is essentially still a Game Boy game by discovering all the pieces of heart, fairy fountains, and secret dungeons, playing all the mini games, even the annoying claw machine one, destroying the land in search of seashells like some sort of topiary maniac, assisting the locals, like this goat lady who wants to catfish this poor old Sims guy, or even trying out one truly new thing they added to the game, Dumpe's Dungeon Remixes, where you'll get the opportunity to take rooms you've beaten in previous dungeons and mash them up to make brand new ones. To extend your playtime, I guess? It's definitely not fun. Unless you have JRPG protagonist amnesia or CTE or something, then they're new puzzles every time. So excuse that princess and get ready to rock out with your ocarina out in an extremely straightforward classic Zelda that looks, feels, and sounds like a carefree summer's day. As long as you don't think about the implications of your actions single-handedly deciding the fate of everyone you formed a bond with, snuffing them out carelessly like candles in the wind. Ooh, I love this song. Starring Wingo. Is that a sword? Oraru, happy to see me. Kirkland Brand Mario. Luigi. Chain Chomp. Happy Salesman. Old Saint Social Anxiety. Animal Farm. Tiles from the Crypt Keeper. King K. Roke. Lou Vega Fish. Sin. And. Zelda, Link's Ambient. Look, you can even still steal from the shopkeeper and get vaporized. I totally forgot about that part.
Minecraft Dungeons.